Welcome back. Well, anyone who's driven on Canada's busiest highway during rush hour knows how frustrating bumper-to-bumper traffic can be. But this week, the Premier of Ontario proposed his idea for dealing with Highway 401. Our government is exploring the feasibility of a tunnel under the Highway 401. This tunnel would serve as a new expressway for both cars and transit. Doug Ford says the tunnel would run all the way from Mississauga in the west to Scarborough in the east, a distance of about 55 kilometers, and that could make it the longest tunnel in the world and potentially the most costly. Lots of questions remain about how practical such a mega project is and whether it would actually ease congestion. For his take, I'm joined by transportation engineer Sam Schwartz. He's known for coining the term gridlock, one we use frequently here, and was formerly the New York City traffic commissioner. He joins me from Somers, New York. Thanks very much for taking the time today. You're quite welcome. So this tunnel, as it's been proposed, would run a length of about 55 kilometers from end to end. How feasible is a project like this? You know, f- first of all, almost anything could be built. However, when you're building underground, you're beset with so many problems. There's groundwater issues, there's settlement issues. If it's a car tunnel as opposed to a rail tunnel, it has to come up at a couple of different points. You're not going to run uh, 55 kilometers continuously without any entrances and exits in the tunnel. And every time you come up, you have to deal with uh, sewers, water mains, uh, other infrastructure that may get in the way. So this is a Herculean task. I can't imagine anything being built like this for say less than $50 billion and maybe take 25 to 30 years to build while a lot of people will be uncomfortable with a very noisy and disruptive construction. You know, it's got a big price tag and uh, sounds like a, a pretty heavy lift, uh, but it's similar to a project that uh, was done previously, Boston's Big Dig, uh, replacing a six lane elevated expressway with an underground highway directly beneath the existing one. Sounds similar that project though huge delays huge cost overruns what do you think are the potential uh, for that to happen here uh, in undertaking something like tunneling under the 401 you know every time you build a tunnel you're you have surprises it's amazing how many things we've covered up over the years and we have no records of so yes you're going to see cost overruns Engineers estimates will probably be a fraction as they were in Boston. They were about one fifth the ultimate cost of the big dig. And so you could see costs ranging well over 50 billion. But more importantly, the big dig wasn't so much an addition of lanes. It made it a lot safer, but it hasn't solved Boston's congestion problem. In fact, if you look at the latest reports from INREX, which is a traffic data firm, Boston is the eighth most congested city on the planet. Toronto is 17th. So Hmm. I don't know if you see it as a solution to the congestion problem. In fact, study after study has shown the more lanes you introduce, the more people are likely to drive the greater the likelihood you'll be back at the same level of congestion within a few years. You know, I I drove along this highway yesterday, and when I say I drove along, I mean I I stopped and I went again. (laughs) Stop and go, stop and go. I think it's an experience that a lot of people in this uh, part of uh, the greater Toronto area can uh, relate to. And, you know, the hope for trying to fix this problem and somehow make it better uh, is appealing uh, to people. What do you think, though, would be a better solution? You know, clearly a better solution is transit. You could put transit right down the center of the 401. It's been done in many, many jurisdictions around the country, around North America. 
Uh, so I would say invest in transit, invest in something called hot lanes, which are high occupancy toll lanes. You have a choice, either multiple people per vehicle or you pay a toll. Both of those things could raise revenue and reduce the number of cars on the expressway. The real answer to congestion is fewer vehicles. That could be accomplished by increasing the occupancy per vehicle. My guess is in Toronto, you're no higher than 1.2, 1.3 people per car. You increase that to 1.5 people per car and you'll solve your traffic congestion problem. Traffic engineer Sam Schwartz, we appreciate uh, your thoughts on this today. I hope uh, that there are people listening and we can free up some space for the, for the people on the 401. They're likely sitting there right now uh, tearing their hair out due to the uh, traffic congestion, not just here in Toronto, but across Canada. We really appreciate you being on the program. You're quite welcome.